Hello guys! Welcome back to my channel! Hello guys! Good morning! So welcome to our class and welcome to another episode of our Tax 101. So as you can see on the other side of the screen, we have our next topic which is exclusions of gross income. So I've mentioned before that there are in inclusions, there are exclusions when we talk about gross income. So what are these exclusions? When you say exclusions, these are those exempted, excluded, and not taxable part of the gross income. Therefore, when we say not taxable, they will not be subjected to your regular income tax. On the other hand, when you say inclusions, this means that this is the source of your gross income and therefore they are taxable and subjected to regular income tax. But before we move on with your exclusions of gross income, we go back to our income taxation scheme. So we have already finished discussing your final income tax, your capital gains tax, and now we are here at the regular income tax. And when we say regular income tax, this means that is that the taxable persons are your individuals and also your corporations. So, sabi natin before, it is the catch basin of income taxation and kapag hindi na siya nakikita dito sa final income tax and also with capital gains tax, papasok na sila dito sa regular income tax. Okay, so let's go with the exclusions of gross income. And the first on the list is your proceeds of a life insurance policy. It says here that the proceeds of life insurance policies paid to the heirs or beneficiaries upon the debt of the insured whether in a single sum or otherwise. But if such amounts are held by the insurer under an agreement to pay interest, the interest payment shall be included in the gross income. So, ang ibig sabihin nito is that the proceeds coming from a life insurance, take note of that life insurance, it will be exempted when it will be paid to the heirs or beneficiary upon the debt of the insured. So, for example, someone availed of an insurance policy and then later on, he or she died. The proceeds coming from that life insurance will be given to the heirs or to those beneficiaries such as uh, yung children niya or yung kanyang asawa. That will be exempted as part of the gross income of those receivers since nanggaling yun sa life insurance. And when we say life insurance, it is a security or protection against loss. And ang loss natin dito is yung buhay nung nagpa-insure. Okay, so once na matay siya, magbabayad yung life insurance policy niya ng, isa, ng certain amount to the heirs, to the beneficiaries, and therefore that will be exempted under part. Okay, so for example, kunwari ako nakareceive ng proceeds coming from a certain life, life insurance. Yung mareceive ko na yun, wala akong ginawa. It's not my gross income, it, will, it is not my income, thus it will not be included in my gross income. However, if may interest income or interest payments coming from this life insurance, yun yung magiging taxable part ng gross income natin. Okay, so take note of that. Proceeds of a life insurance. So we have a lot of life, uh, we have a lot of kinds of insurance out there. However, ang excluded lang sa gross income is your proceeds coming from the life insurance. Okay? The next one is the amount received by the insured as return of premium. Okay, so for letters A and B, they are actually connected. However, for letter A, mamamatay yung insured. Sa letter B naman, nabuhay siya or mabubuhay siya or ma-outlive niya yung kanyang insurance policy. So for example, nagkaroon ng isang pumasok sa isang policy yung isang tao. And then, later on, dun sa Insurance policy na yun nakapaloob na if in case ma-outlive niya yun, meron siyang mare-receive out of the insurance policy. Yung return of premium niya or the return of capital nung insurance na yun will be exempted dun sa gross income niya. However, yung excess of the premiums will be taxable since na-outlive naman niya yung kanyang insurance policy. 
So let us look with the illustration number one. In here, we have Marie who took out a life insurance policy for 200000 with her husband as beneficiary. And then under this policy, the insurer will pay Marie the amount of 200000 when Marie reaches the age of 45 years old or to her beneficiary husband in case she dies before the maturity of the policy. So the total premiums that would be paid upon maturity of the policy is 100,000. Okay, ang ibig sabihin ng illustration number one, si Marie makakatanggap siya ng 200,000 or his or her beneficiary, which is her husband, if in case mamatay siya. Pag na-outlive naman ni Marie, makakatanggap pa rin siya ng 200,000 at the age of 45 years. However, yung total premiums na may ibabayad niya dun sa life insurance niya is 100,000. Okay, for letter A requirement, the policy matured when Marie reached the age of 45 and the insurer paid her the amount of 200,000. Determine the nature of the amount of 200,000 which Marie received under the policy. Okay, ang sagot natin dito is the 200,000 will be divided into two, the other one, the 100,000 will be exempted, and the another 100,000 will be taxable. Why? Yung 100,000 is the total premiums which was given or which was paid by Marie to that life insurance, and the other 100,000 was the return on the premium given by Marie doon sa kanyang life insurance policy. So, take note of that. Return of capital and return on capital. When we say return of capital or return of premiums, these are exempted or excluded. And when we say return on capital, this is the gain got from these life insurance. That's why they will be taxable. However, for letter B, assuming Marie died four years before maturity of the policy, and the insurer paid 200000 to the beneficiary husband, the premiums already paid when Marie died was 50000 Determine the nature of the amount of 200000 which the beneficiary husband received under the policy. Okay, in this case, the total 200000 will be exempted on the part of the husband since Marie died before the maturity of the policy. Okay, so that's the difference between letter A and letter B. Dun sa letter A, the insurer will die. Therefore, yung makakatanggap ng gross, nung makakatanggap ng proceeds from the life insurance is the heirs or the beneficiary stated. Therefore, it will be totally excluded sa gross income. However, once ma-outlive ni Marie or kahit sino mang nagpa, nagpa secure ng life insurance, yung life insurance policy nila, it will be taxable on the part na return on premiums. Okay, so pag return of premiums, it will be excluded. However, when it is a return on premiums, it will be included doon sa ating gross income. Okay, so that is for letters A and B. Next one is gifts, bequests, and devices. So the value of property acquired by gift, bequest, device, or descent, provided, however, that income from such property, as well as gift, bequest, device, or descent of income from any property in cases of transfers of divided interest shall be included in the gross income. So anong ibig sabihin nito? Kapag nakatanggap ka daw ng regalo, Yung regalo na yan, it will be excluded doon sa gross income. However, when that gift has an income out of it, it will be taxable or it will be part of the gross income. So when we say gifts, these are donations during the lifetime of both the donor and the donee. Okay, so this should be double E. Okay, so when we say gifts, ang taxability niya is under your donor's tax. When we say bequest or devices, ang difference ng dalawa is when we say bequest, this is a gift of personal property. And when we say devices, this is a gift of real property. Yung dalawang to, it is given upon the death of the donor or it form part as an inheritance to on sa part 
ng mga receiver or heirs or beneficiaries. Ang taxability natin is estate tax. Therefore, they will not be included doon sa gross income nung makaka-receive because they are being paid by the donor himself or herself. Okay? The only, diff the only uh, thing that you should remember here is that the income coming from these gifts or donations will be taxable. So, for example, we have here Mr. Ruben Reyes, who is a manager of Piso Piso Bank, with an annual salary of 260000 So, on August 1, 2013, he in inherited from an aunt a lot with a five-door apartment valued at 750000 The apartment, which is fully tenanted, has a monthly rental income of 60000 Determine the gross income of Ruben Reyes for 2013. Okay, so dun sa computation natin, we can see that the gross income of Ruben Reyes is 560,000. How did we get it? We have the annual salary of 260,000 plus rental income coming from the apartment of 300,000. Okay, so the 750,000 amount here is exempted doon sa gross income ni Ruben Reyes since this was given or it was inherited from her from his aunt and it will be exempted or excluded doon sa gross income. However, since pinaparentahan nila and meron siyang monthly rental of 60,000, it will be part of the gross income of Ruben since it will already form part of his income kasi sa kanya na yan. Okay, so nabigay yung property, yung property will be exempted, pero kung merong fruits, yung property na binigay, it will be taxable on the part of the donee or si Ruben Reyes. So, once na-receive na ni Ruben Reyes yung five-door apartment na yan, sa kanya na. Therefore, lahat ng mag a doon sa apartment na yan or sa property na yan will be the, the ownership of Ruben. Okay, so lahat ng mag a dyan sa property na yan is kay Ruben Reyes na yan. Therefore, it will be part of his gross income. That is why when you computed the gross income, ang sagot natin is 560. Since we, we, ha we have to add 300,000, 60,000 multiplied by 5 months. Okay, na-inherit niya ng August 1, 2013. Okay, so the value of the property inherited is an exclusion from the gross income. However, any income of fruit or fruit from the property inherited shall be included in the gross income of Ruben. Okay, the next one is compensation for injuries or sickness. So according to this, any amount received coming from compensation for injuries or sickness will be exempted or excluded dun sa gross income. So an example of this is, for example, you um, experience an, an accident, Kunwari, nabangga ka ng isang jeep or isang bus and then later on, kinasuhan mo yung driver nung jeep or nung bus. And then, they, they gave you a settlement fee and that settlement fee will be exempted or not excluded doon sa gross income. And then, kapag na-hospitalize ka, it will also be exempted kapag sila yung nagbayad ng hospitalization bills mo. However, kapag binayaran din nila yung supposed to be salary na matatanggap mo pero hindi mo natanggap kasi naka-hospital ka, it will be form part of your gross income. So, ang excluded lang dito is the compensation for the injury or the sickness. However, when we say personal injury or sickness, this does not only mean the sickness or physical injury itself. Hindi lang siya physical. It could also be non-physical injury such as your personal embarrassment, injury to personal reputation in the community, mental pain and suffering, fright, serious anxiety, wounded feelings, moral shock, defamation, slander, breach of promise to marry, or libel. Okay, so for example, napasaktan na ka and then kinasuhan mo siya. Nung nagbayad sila ng compensation because of what you felt, nung kinasuhan mo sila, it will be excluded doon sa gross income natin. Okay, so this 
Uh, I what I am going to use as an example is the breach of promise to Mary. So this is an actual case of a breach of promise to Mary. But but when we say breach of promise to Mary, hindi mo lang hindi mo siya basta basta mapapakasuhan if we do not have grounds for that. And then, ang grounds ng breach of promise to marry is that dapat meron ka ng actual expense and that yung wedding is already in preparation. Okay, so malapit ng maganap yung wedding or they are already conducting the preparations of wedding, nag-prepare na silang magpakasal. So, in this case, we have Wasmer versus Veles. Okay, so this is, this is an actual case na tinakbuhan nung lalaki two days before the wedding yung babae. Okay, so it was ordered by the court na si Veles will pay moral damages and exemplary damages. Okay, so when you say moral and exemplary damages, this is also part of the non-physical injury. Thus, it will be excluded doon sa gross income. Okay, so for example, uh, a day before the wedding, bigla kanyang tinakbuhan yung bride or groom mo. So therefore, pwede mo siyang kasuhan and pwede mo siyang hingan ng mga damages because of what he or she did sa iyo. However, kapag hindi pa kayo nagkakaroon ng actual expenses or hindi pa kayo na talaga nagpre-prepare ng wedding na yan, it, it cannot be a ground or kahit hiniwala yan ka pa or tinakbuhan ka, hindi siya pwedeng maging ground para kasuhan mo siya because wala pang expenses na nangyayari. Okay, so for example, um, he or she just promised to marry you someday. Okay, so hindi yon pwedeng ground for breach of promise to marry. There should be an actual expense and that the, the wedding is already in preparation or malapit na kayong ikasal. Okay, so that is for compensation for injuries or sickness. So it's either aksidente yan, nagkasakit ka because of someone else, and then kinasuhan mo, binigyan ka ng compensation, it will be exempted. And also for those non-physical injuries, such as yun niya, breach of promise to marry. Okay, the next one, we have income exempt under treaty. Okay, so income of any kind to the extent required by the by any treaty obligation binding upon the government of the Philippines. So, they are excluded by international agreement to which the Philippine gov government is a signatory are excluded from income tax. So, I have put here a link so you can just browse it. There are a lot of treaties that uh, the Philippines is one of the signatories and once this treaty is in effect with the other country, those income coming from those uh, countries, specifically for this treaty, will be exempted or excluded to on sa gross income. So you can click here, or I could I can just give the link later on, and then you can browse all the treaties that are um, exempted to on sa gross income. Natin. 